One of the things that's gotten the most press in agriculture here in the last couple of years has been Roundup resistant weeds, but we don't have any of those on our farm, Darren. <laughs> yeah, right, Brandon. What? See, no. this, this is one thing that I don't agree with, Brandon. <laughs> you know, we have some Roundup resistant weeds on our farm. We're just controlling them right now because we're using other modes of action. We yeah. aren't just using the Roundup. Yeah. Let's take everything out of the equation then, Brandon. Do you feel comfortable not using a pre, not adding anything well, with the Roundup? Just spray course, Roundup? Of, of course I wouldn't, but not because I'm not going <laughs> to kill the weeds. It's just I wouldn't kill them at the right time. I honestly do not believe we have Roundup resistant weeds oh, on our right. farm. Now, I will say this, we have Roundup tolerant weeds. So in other words, it used to take, well, I, it used to take a pint, <laughs> pint and a half to kill okay, some of these weeds if, with Roundup. Now if we drown them, it'll work, they'll still die. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it's taking higher rates of Roundup all over the country. And I, I will say this, I have been alarmed this winter. I've gotten a lot of calls from farmers who said, yeah, my Roundup just is not killing my water hemp anymore. It's not killing my kosher anymore, or my lamb's quarters, and my mare's tail. So we're, we're getting a lot more of these issues all the time. And obviously in the southern U.S., it's a much bigger deal. You were on a farm just last year that was terrible, right? Okay, well, there's one field in Arkansas, and there's just one weed here or there uh, three years ago. Then two years ago, that one weed ended up getting drugged through the field with the combine, and there were some streaks out in the field. And actually, the farmer had fired his applicator because he thought, the app applicator. he thought the spray applicator did a terrible job and couldn't get the weeds under control. Well, it was resistant weeds, and that sprayer applicator only had Roundup, and that was all they were spraying. And all of a sudden, that one streak through the field or two streaks through the field became an entire field infested with over 300,000 pigweeds per acre. That was just in a three-year time span. Well, it doesn't take very many years for a problem to go from just a scattered weed here or there to a problem across an entire farm. And the reason why is weeds have so many seeds. When you look at the pigweed species, like palmer pigweed in the south or water hemp up in our area, each plant could have a million seeds or more, depending on how big that plant gets. So when you think about a million seeds on one plant, you just let one or two of those go in your field. Pretty soon next year, you have a streak through the field that's very thick. And the next year after that, uh, with the combine spreading things or maybe tillage spreading things or just the wind moving that seed around, you're going to end up with the whole field contaminated. So you can't let those one or two weeds go because they might just be resistant weeds on your farm. But here's the way I look at this whole deal. Roundup is still very effective on most weeds. So what if there are one or two weeds that are Roundup resistant? You've still got thousands of other weeds that Roundup is going to control very well and you don't want to lose that. So sure, you can, you're going to need to use some other herbicides out there, but you want to have Roundup in that program just because it's going to control all these other weeds. It's still a very good herbicide. Roundup's very valuable. It's the best herbicide ever invented. It really is. It controls such a wide range of grasses and broadleaves and can kill them at various heights, even big weeds. So you want to keep that as a valuable tool in your tool chest. So in order to do that, you have to make sure you're keeping your fields completely weed free. So if you see an escape here or there, you need to change things up or you just need to get out of the pickup, grab a corn knife and go out and chop them down. Don't let weeds get away on your farm. So what we would suggest is putting down a pre-emerge herbicide with a different mode of action, then following with something post-emerge along with the Roundup. So for example, in corn on our farm, we'll throw Status in or Callisto or Laudus or maybe even Buctrel. Okay, that really will help on some of these different weeds. If you're in soybeans, pre-emerge again, you could use Treflan, Valor, one of the authority products. Post-emerge, you could throw in Flexstar or something else. You've got a lot of different options. So the main thing is just make sure you're using some of these other options. Believe me, I know Roundup is cheap and I love to save money. I'm trying to do our program as cheap as we possibly can. I don't want to spend a lot of dollars, but by the same token, we've got fairly good prices in terms of commodity prices. We want some extra yield out there. We can't lose that yield to wheat. Well, on our farm, we've always used a combination of Roundup Ready corn, Liberty Link corn, even some conventional corn. But in the south, there's a big demand shift to Liberty Link beans. And we're seeing that in the north, too. Uh, even in North Dakota and northern Minnesota, there's a lot of guys that are shifting to Liberty Link soybeans as part of their rotation. And you say, wait a minute, well, why would they be doing that way up north? They don't have near the resistant weed problem that there is in the south. Well, the reason is because they got Roundup Ready sugar beets a few years ago, and they thought, man, you know, we've had such a weed control problem in sugar beets. Roundup is a valuable tool to us. It's just a good stewardship practice to use a different crop or a different mode of action, yeah. a, 
a different herbicide program when we get into other crops like soybeans, for example. So the farmers there were using Liberty Link soybeans. In the south, it's driven by poor weed control. So using something like Ignite in the Liberty Link program is a great tool, but again, I see some growers making the same mistake using Ignite, Ignite, Ignite. Some of those guys are using Ignite in the burn down, a couple of applications of Ignite in crop, and they're trying to make Ignite be Roundup. It's not. You need to be smart about things. Use one, two, three pre-emerge herbicides depending on where you're at and the length of your growing season. Then use Ignite in crop as a tool, but not as the whole weed control program. Well, once again, Roundup resistant weeds are a growing problem all across the United States and really around the world, but fortunately we have a lot of good alternatives. I've never worried too much about Roundup resistant weeds simply because we got a lot of good pre-emerge herbicides, a lot of good post-emerge herbicides, in pretty much every crop there is. Just make sure you're taking advantage of these different products so Roundup Resistance doesn't destroy the yields on your farm. Well, one of the weeds that you may be watching out for is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 